Good morning, everybody. I just want to make sure everybody puts themselves on mute um, before the presentation starts. And we'll begin here in another minute. It shows on my screen. <clears throat> Let's give everybody a little bit of time to jump on here. Okay, I will continue to watch the admit room, but um, I want to welcome everybody to the 2021 Ag Chat series. This is the first uh, presentation in a line of three for our Ag Chat series, Waterways to High Tunnels. And this is presented by Megan Mosier with our NRCS office. I wanted to make note that our sponsor is Warren County Farm Bureau, and I want to thank them for that. We'll have a little bit with them afterwards. Um, but this morning, I wanted to make sure that we highlighted a couple things from Warren County Soil and Water. And by the way, I'm Cindy Meyer. I'm the Conservation Program Specialist with Warren County Soil and Water. And um, if you're not familiar with the other two Ag Chat series, February 12th, we have the Blanchard River Demonstration Farms Network presentation. So this will cover some of those items that um, some of the farms are putting in, uh, BNPs that those farms are putting in up there. Um, Farm Bureau is helping us present this, this um, program on February 12th. We will also talk about um, the Cesar Creek Collaborative, a collaborative that's been put together down here in Warren County and concentrating on the Cesar Creek watershed. And perhaps maybe we'll see some of the projects and things that are being put um, in the demonstration farms up there in the north down here in Warren County at some point. So we want to highlight this demonstration farms network to really see what they're doing. On March 12th, we'll have the cover crops for soil health program and with our technicians and hope you will join us for that. Again, to really register for this, you need to go to warrenswcd.com for more information on that registering um, process. I wanted to mention that our tree sale is happening now until March 17th. And so if you haven't gotten on and ordered trees, um, do so now. We know that we've got uh, uh, some of the trees that are selling out as we speak. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, our technician Dylan Schmur is here with us today. And he's gonna talk a little bit about the outreach efforts that we have going on. Um, I don't know, you guys probably can't see me on here. Um, the mics are kind of too close for me to be on, on screen and talk at the same time. Um, I'm in the chat line, um, waving a little bit here. Um, but outreach programs for this, uh, we are actually working with NRCS um, to go through and help with their conservation um, practice programs there to help install some more stuff on ground. Um, we're also trying to go out and reach to see if we can get on site to help with any erosion issues. Um, possibly some tiling issues on, on site as well. Um, so if, if you guys have any questions on that or need any information um, on waterways, erosion, tiling, um, we do some pond um, help as well. Um, so if you guys have any issues on that or have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, is our contact information in this slide or we send that out afterwards? Oh, we'll send it out. So we have a follow-up uh, email to all of you that will include Megan's um, presentation this morning, a short mm -hmm. survey, another um, flyer from Megan, and then our contact information if you don't already have it. So you'll have that um, later on today or early next week. Perfect. Uh, and we also do nutrient management stuff for smaller fields. Um, I can take a look at the larger fields, nutrient management plans, if you guys have those going out for crop fields. Um, I'm not into the manure management yet, uh, but I can help with those as well. Uh, we do have some programs to utilize those and run those. Um, but yeah, we're, we're definitely here for any, any, guy, any help you guys need on the farm. Great, thank you, Dylan. You're welcome. So I'm gonna stop share here and we'll get Megan's presentation up.
Okay, can you see my screen? And I want to introduce you to Megan. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, Megan Mosier is here with us today, and she has degrees in environmental science from Ohio State and a master's in agronomy from Purdue. Um, from graduate school, she moved to Louisiana, where she started her career with NRCS as a soil conservationist. And in March 2020, I'll have to talk to you about that sometime, <laughs> moving almost to quarantine, right? Um, in March 2020, her NRCS career took her back to Urbana, Ohio. And as of January 4th um, this year, she is our district conservationist for Green and Warren County. So we're excited to have Megan this morning to talk to us about these cool programs. Uh, and can you guys hold off on questions until after? Uh, you guys are more than welcome to put the questions in the chat. I will be monitoring that. Um, so if you can please either put them in there or wait until after the presentation for any questions. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for that introduction. Um, like Cindy said, I, I grew up on a, a grain farm in Northwest Ohio near Toledo. And to be a part of agriculture in sort of this way by working for NRCS and helping farmers every day is, is pretty great. Um, my brother's back home taking over the farm right now. And for me to still be a part of agriculture is just fantastic. And I've been working for four years now be, to become a district conservationist. Um, and I'm just thrilled to finally plant my feet in one spot and start for uh, looking for a home. So I'm glad to be here. Uh, my goal with this presentation is really just to provide an overview of what NRCS programs have to offer um, and how we can help you achieve your goals on your property. So our job is to provide technical assistance for all farms and it could be a farm of five acres or it could be a farm of 3,000 acres um, and we cover all land uses from livestock, cropland to forestry systems. And so our job always begins with the conservation plan. So if Joe the farmer calls us up and he says, hey, I've got some compaction issues on my property, um, either myself or, or Beth and Warren County will go out there and we'll have that conversation with that farmer and ask them what their goals are and what their resource concerns are. And we'll document all of that into a conservation plan. And that conservation plan will basically give them recommendations um, on how they can help achieve their goals. And yeah, the conservation plans provides management alternatives that will sustain the farm for future generations. Now, with that plan, we can either just give it to the producer and say, these are our recommendations and they could pay out of pocket to address those resource concerns. Or, and what most people we find are interested in is some sort of financial assistance um, and one, method we use to implement these conservation plans are through our Farm Bill programs. Now, as you guys probably know, the Farm Bill changes each year, but the general programs that we have to offer and what most people um, come to us for are for the EQIP and the CSP program. So the EQIP stands for the Environmental Quality Incentives Program and the CSP stands for the Conservation Stewardship Program. And my plan with this presentation is to go into detail on, you know, who's gonna qualify for EQIP, who's gonna qualify for CSP, and based on your goals for your property and what you're already doing, we can find a program that will fit you. So I'll start with EQIP. The Environmental Quality Incentives Program is a voluntary program that provides financial and technical assistance to ag producers um, for contracts up to 10 years. And these contracts provide financial assistance to help plan and implement those conservation practices um, for any resource concern out on the property. So what's gonna happen is either Beth or I will come out, we'll look at your property, we'll discuss your concerns, and we'll develop the conservation plan and the conservation plan could be implemented through this EQIP program. And that's where um, you'll find financial assistance. So I'm gonna go and talk a little bit about different EQIP practices and what NRCS is available for um, in order to cost share. 
So I'll go through some livestock practices and common uh, cropland and forestry practices as well. So with any sort of livestock operation, if, if that individual is grazing their cattle or whatever they have, our goal is always to implement what we call prescribed grazing. Um, and prescribed grazing, ideally it's um, rotational grazing in multiple paddocks. Say, say you've got five pastures out there. Um, we, we're gonna help find practices to help you implement that grazing. So the practices could be like livestock fencing, um, water troughs, heavy use pads, uh, pipelines, the pasture plantings, any sort of weed control, installing wells. All of those practices are umbrellaed under the goal of prescribed grazing. So this first one here is just a cross fence. Uh, we take one pasture and we divide it into two so that we make use of the forage that's out there. Um, and of course, with any sort of practice that will be cost shared through NRCS, it's required that the participants uh, meet NRCS specs and standards. So for instance, for the cross fence, the, the H brace will have to be a certain width, the diameter of the post and the gauge of the wire. Um, it's nothing crazy, but it's important to understand that we do have certain standards that need met in order to receive that cost share rate. Uh, here's a picture of a watering facility. Actually, this was from Louisiana. Um, so basically, we can locate watering facilities either between fences or we can put them out in the middle of a large pasture in order to get better grazing distribution because where that trough is, um, is most likely where the cattle are going to graze around. And again, that, that trough would be sized um, according to the species that are out there and the number of head. Heavy use pads, um, these are commonly used in gateways or it could be like a feeding pad. Um, we always plan heavy use pads if we are to cost share on a water trough. Uh, there's a lot of different options and uses for those. Pasture plantings. So there's, there's many different options for pasture plantings as well. Um, we can actually pay to go out there and seed a pasture if it's say cropland conversion. Um, if that particular field was formerly in row crop, we can cost share to, to seed that whole thing. Um, or if it's a current pasture and there's just a bunch of undesirable species out there, we can cost share to do an interseeding or a total replant. And everything's just a case-by-case -case basis. Um, it's just gonna be a, a matter of having that conversation uh, with the NRCS employee. Waste storage facilities, these are common. Uh, I know at least in Greene County, we did a bunch uh, on horse uh, operations a while back. So again, that, that barn would be sized uh, according to the number of head. Okay, moving on to forestry equip practices. So I'll talk about tree and shrub establishment, uh, forest stand improvement activities, and then also brush management. And again, these are just sort of the most popular practices through equip. We have a list of probably 150 different practices, um, but I'm just gonna cover the most common ones. So with tree and shrub establishment, um, we can do that. And again, everything's going to have to be according to our specs. So it'll have to be a, a certain number of trees per acre and then as well as species, depending on if you would like them for production or if you would like them for uh, wildlife habitat. Um, with any of our forestry applicants, we work very closely with the Forest Service. And so a Forest Service technician would come out to the property, uh, assess it, and make their recommendations. Here's an example of forest and improvement. The title of forest and improvement is sort of an umbrella title. Uh, and just one of the examples under that is to create woodland openings. Um, basically, here's an example of a one acre opening that was created just to allow the sunlight to reach that forest floor um, and enhance diversity. Brush management, so here's one that was, um, this was up in Yellow Springs just this past fall. 
Um, before, I wish I had a before picture, but before you couldn't even see through uh, any of this forest here. And it was all invaded with honeysuckles and other undesirable species. And this equip participant hired a contractor to come in and through equip cost share dollars, she was able to get control um, of the honeysuckle. And that practice is called brush management. Okay, cropland. So I'll talk about cover crops, very common. Um, grass waterways, also very common. Nutrient management and high tunnels. So this is a really neat picture. Um, there was a producer who just sent me this the other day. So this is a, just a multi-species cover crop that's planted on the left. And then on the right is a picture of runoff from two different fields. And those two fields have the same management. They're both no-tilled. And the picture on the left, there is a cover crop planted on that field. And then on the right, there's no cover crop. That's a, that's a really good picture. Um, and again, with cover crop, there's many different components under it. So if you want to plant a, a basic cover crop of just cereal rye, that'll be a certain cost share rate. And if you want to plant a multi-species cover crop, that cost share will be slightly higher. Okay, here's a picture of a grass waterway that just went in. Again, this was near Yellow Springs um, this past fall. And any of our grass waterway applicants uh, will work very closely with district technicians um, so that they can get those designs laid out. Nutrient management is another popular one, uh, whether it's for pasture plantings or it's for total cropland systems. Um, it can be as simple as a basic soil sample, say you sample by soil type, or you might sample um, based on acres, like one sample per 12 acres, or it can be as intense as variable rate um, fertilizer applications based off grid samples. And all of our cost share rates reflect that level of intensity. Here's a real popular one this year, um, high tunnels. So we can cost share on high tunnels. Again, they have to meet our specs and standards. Um, but the, the most common size we tend to cost share on is a 30 by 98. And people have been real happy with those. We'll uh, put them over an existing garden and then they maintain them. And any equip practice has to be maintained for its lifespan. So a fence is gonna have a lifespan of say, gosh, um, Louisiana was 20 years, but here it might be, it might be a little less. I'd have to check. Um, but every practice is going to come with a lifespan. Uh, another popular one are for the wildlife friendly people. So uh, the wildlife plantings, they tend to cost share pretty well. Uh, again, it's just for putting pollinators or wildlife friendly species out there. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about the, the application process and then the actual contracting process. So you've kind of have a grasp of what NRCS practices are available, but how does the application process happen and how do you get a contract? So EQIP, as I said, it's a cost share program. This means that we don't pay 100% of most practices. Um, all of our practices come with a fixed cost share rate that you would know up front. So say, for instance, a fence, we're going to pay $2.30 per foot. Now, it's going to be up to you to go out and find a contractor um, and find out what their rates are. So if, if they charge $3.20 a foot, then you're going to be out a dollar. Um, so it all depends on who you contract to do the work or if you're willing to do some of the work yourself. In general, we always like to give people, um, say, 75% of the practice may be covered by NRCS. Um, but again, it's that fixed cost share rate. Um, so if you choose to apply for EQIP, your application will be ranked amongst all the other applicants, and then the top ranked applicants will get selected for funding. Now, the ranking is going to be based off of the resource concerns that you're addressing, um, which practices you choose to address those concerns, 
and the soils and the watershed. Um, there's a lot of different factors that go into the ranking. And as I noted here, we do have slightly higher cost share rates for people who are qualified as beginning farmers, socially disadvantaged veterans, and limited resource. Um, so as I said at the beginning, NRCS just comes out and we meet with you to develop uh, what your goals are for your property and make that conservation plan. And with that plan, if it, if it were to go through the application process, if it were ranked and selected for funding, um, it's going to average between a one and a five year contract. And NRCS um, will work with the producer to make a schedule of operations, we call it, and schedule the activities um, according to your schedule, really. So say you want to plant, you want to make sure that a cover crop goes in after um, or before a cash crop, um, we can definitely work with you and schedule that appropriately. Okay, so once you receive that contract, you would be responsible for completing those scheduled practices according to NRCS specs and also on time. And once you complete an activity, say you install a fence, um, you'd make sure that you keep all those receipts, let us know when it's done, and someone will come out and complete a site check. Um, and then if everything checks out good, you will be reimbursed that fixed cost share amount that you would know up front and that would be on your contract. And then the producer is responsible for maintaining the practice for its lifespan. Okay, so that was kind of a mouthful of equip. Now I'm going to talk about the Conservation Stewardship Program, CSP. So CSP is what I like to call next level conservation. It is a holistic program that looks at your entire operation. It looks at what you're already doing for conservation. If you're already planting a cover crop, if you already um, have a no-till, uh, if you are out there taking soil samples, and it looks at that entire operation, and then its goal is to take it to that next level. So CSP is a five-year contract, and contract payments are made annually based on different components. So the first component we call an existing activity payment. This is a payment that's kind of like a pat on the back. It says you're already doing a good job with conservation. It pays you for the resource concerns that you're already addressing out there. Um, and the payment's gonna be based on number of resource concerns you're addressing and then also number of acres that are out there. And then in order to receive that base payment for five years, say it's a $5,000 payment, you have to do what we call enhancements. So, and here it lists, it calls it an additional activity payment. Um, and I'm gonna talk about those enhancements here shortly. So if, if everything's met with the original CSP, you do a great job in those five years, there will be an option for renewal um, in, the, in the five years after that. So these CSP enhancements um, are management activities that go above and beyond the minimum conservation practice standard requirement. And basically what this means is Say you're doing a normal practice, like EQIP, we generally have practices, um, and in CSB we have enhancements. So say you're already doing a cover crop, but you're just planting a, a basic single species cover crop out there. What CSP could plan for an enhancement is a multi-species cover crop. Um, and that's just one simple example. Everything's going to be a case-by-case -case basis, and there's many, many different enhancements to choose from. And examples of um, different enhancements for different land uses are here. So for forestry, we've done patch openings um, and planted pollinator habitat in those. We could help with buffers or small tree plantings for wildlife. Um, with livestock CSPs, I've planned just herbaceous weed control in a pasture. Um, access control fencing to fence off a stream, and then prescribed grazing to implement rotational grazing. 
let's see, cropland. Again, I talked about the cover crops. Uh, if you're doing just basic nutrient management where you're soil sampling every, say, 20 acres, uh, we could plan an enhancement to soil sample on a grid and then variable rate apply fertilizer. So that's, that's kind of CSP in the nutshell. Basically, what's important to understand about that is that it's next level conservation. So if you've got a mud lot out there, um, your manure's not being managed, your conventional tilling, um, if, if you need help on certain and specific resource concerns, EQIP is most likely the program for you. And then once um, those kind of big ticket items get addressed, we like to move people on to CSP. And what's important to know for CSP is that you do get those base payments for five years based off acreage and based off the resource concerns you're already addressing. But you will have to do an enhancement or multiple enhancements on top of that in order to receive that base payment. That was kind of a mouthful of programs in a <laughs> short amount of time. Okay, so here's just some facts I threw in. And um, there will be a, a fact sheet that's sent out after this presentation um, that will go into a little more detail, but I just thought it was interesting. So there's about 925 farms in Warren County with over 1,500 ag producers. And here is a summary of from the 2018 Farm Bill of programs uh, and how, how EQIP dollars and CSP dollars have been spent in the county in the last three years. And just in 2020, um, we had one livestock, one high tunnel, and then one contract for brush management. So here is our contact information. Um, Beth is most likely your, your first line of contact. Uh, she works in Warren County every day, and I'm also available to assist. And if you guys have any questions, I am happy to take them. I'm not seeing any as of now. We currently don't have any in the chat. If you would please, if you have a question, please let us know through the chat box. Um, Megan, I have a question. Sure. So what can one expect when they sign up for EQIP and you are, uh, are you doing an inspection every year to ensure that that practice is maintained? What would that look like? Sorry, there's someone knocking on my window. <laughs> um, so, I'm sorry, can you say that again? <laughs> so, when they put in a practice for EQIP and you said uh, that um, they have to be maintained and you have to ensure that they're maintained for the last yes. at BMP, that inspection work? Do you come out every year? Yeah, so basically, if, if your contract is still active, there's always a chance for it to be pulled for a spot check. And a spot check is when either the area office or the state office will come and they make sure they make sure that I'm doing my job and that the producer has implemented whatever practice to our standards and specs. Um, and say the, the lifespan of the practice is 10 years, I mean, there, there is a chance that someone could come out um, eight years down the road and just take a look and make sure that everything's still functioning. And um, for example, that you're not using a hoop house for a future chicken house. Great, thank you. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions. I have nothing else to pop up in the chat box. No other questions currently yet. So we'll just wait a few more minutes. Sure. I, guess I think when people hear programs at first, it's it's a lot to take in. Yeah, definitely. On my end, I just thought of something that, you know, Warren County, you said we had maybe three um, applications that were put in um, in the past year. Like, how does that work? Do we get a, 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 okay, you have obligated funds. Can you talk on that a little bit more? Yeah, so that three, that's actually the number of contracts that were funded. Um, so Beth may have had, uh, say, 10 applicants uh, last year, but only three of those were funded. Um, and 
the obligation process and who gets selected for funding actually comes from our state office now. Um, it used to be more at a local level and I can't speak for Ohio, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if this was nationwide. Um, but as far as my understanding, before the, the funds were given to the field office, so they'd be given to Warren County and given to Lane and Beth um, to distribute that way. But now it happens from our state office. Okay, great. Anything else? Before you get off here, and we'll keep watching the chat, so if something comes up, um, we'll be sure to ask Megan here before she gets off. But I wanted to give a little, a couple minutes here um, to Ashley Rose, and she's with Warren County Farm Bureau, and of course our sponsor for the 2021 Ag Chat. And so Ashley, are you available there? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes. Great. So I apologize for coming in late. Um, we were actually on a public policy call talking about what has passed in the lame duck session, um, what's coming down the line for legislation that Farm Bureau is working on on behalf of our farmers. Um, so I do apologize. It was kind of a last minute meeting. But, but Megan, I want to take a moment and thank you for your presentation. Um, we really appreciate you speaking to us. And um, you know, as everyone knows, 2020 was a crazy year and 2021 is also starting to look a little, a little crazy, but um, Farm Bureau is working on behalf of our farmers every single day. Um, while we don't get to do our typical things like Ag Day at the Capitol where 400 plus Farm Bureau members are talking to legislators all at the same time, um, we are going to be busting those up and putting it into smaller local sessions. Um, you know, our, our county Farm Bureau boards are really getting creative of how do we best serve our members in this new pandemic world where we may be not able to meet in person. Um, so I just want everybody to know that their Farm Bureau is really working and advocating on behalf of them. Um, rural broadband did not get passed through in the lame duck session, but it's something that's definitely a top priority for us. Uh, as we told the legislators, you know, nobody wanted COVID to happen, but what a beautiful example of how important that rural broadband access is. Um, so we just really appreciate Soil and Water letting us team up for these uh, virtual ag chats. We just feel this program is really important. We feel that it's important that our farmers can get the knowledge they need in order to improve their practices. Um, and also just great partnerships between county agents. So. I really appreciate it, and uh, I hope that everybody has a great day and a great rest of the year. Thank you, Ashley. And yes, we love partnering with Farm Bureau. And I want to echo what Ashley said. Megan, thank you for taking the time this morning with us. We really, really appreciate it. If you want parts of this um, presentation today, we are going to po post this on our YouTube channel, and we'll have links on our website. Um, so we'll have that up in the next day or two um, that you can access it. And if you have friends and family that would like to view it, send them our way. We'll be glad to point them in the right direction. Any other questions before we get off here? I've got nothing. Okay. Megan, you're off the hook. <laughs> Ashley, we'll see you later. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day and a great weekend. Thanks for having me.